right guys we got a very classic one here oxygen sensor diagnostic i'll just show you guys how easy it is to diagnose the actual oxygen sensor hitter circuit i think i've done similar video in the past but uh one tip this is an autel scan tool for some reason autel doesn't like to um, t um you know uh, give you good data uh, live data on Australian vehicles for some reason, I don't know why. I've had that issue with Ford and Holden. Just sometimes they don't want to communicate, they communicate and they disconnect and a lot of things. So basically for this one, I couldn't find anything on the actual car and um, uh, vehicle uh, under Holden. So I went to the OBD2 and there's uh, my fault code right here, O2 sensor heater control circuit, bank two sensor one, right? so now it's very easy i'll show you like within like three minutes you can diagnose this car it's very very simple All right so what we know it's a circuit fault so that means there's something wrong with the uh, circuit means the sensor or wiring or the computer right so i'll show you very quickly how to do this so basically right here we got our oxygen sensor so it says bank two sensor one so we need to identify which bank is what so i think i've talked about this in the past as well but basically if you look from here that this tablet cover the first one this tablet cover is sitting behind the other side this is a v6 so it's got two banks right so the one sticking further forward is always going to be the bank one or you can always say there's a three ignition coil this side and the three on the other side so just follow that just imagine a line and go across the other side and see where that line up right so in this case um, this side is the bank one because it's sticking further to, towards the front of the car um, so this is going to be bank two so that's the fault code we have bank two sensor one the sensor one is the front sensor so it's before the catalytic converter right okay it's very simple so i got my test light hooked up here at the top so once two wires coming from the sensor wire i'll just back probed it so i'll just show you how to identify it's very simple it's universal for a uh, uh for oxygen sensor um especially with the four wire oxygen sensor i'll show you exactly what i'm doing right here so if you go down here, you see, obviously, the oxygen sensor is connected to my... Uh, so, just give a second, I'll just fix this light, guys. Alright, so oxygen sensor is right here on my exhaust, right? And if you follow that, the wiring comes up here, there's a connector. So if you look closely on the connector you see four wire so in this case we got black gray white and a white i don't know if the camera can pick that colors but a heater circuit is always going to be the two same color wire doesn't matter if it's blue blue black black gray gray white white i do not care it's the same color two wire that's what's going to be oxygen sensor so i'm just back probe to that both the pin obviously Make sure nothing touches on the body. And up here, basically I got a jumper lead and I'm connected to the test light, positive and negative, right? So all I'm going to do is, while I'm watching the scan tool, I'm just going to start the car now. All right, guys. And this is best when you do it when it's cold, so you can really see the result, okay? So I'm just going to start the car now. Um, before that, I'm going to go to my live data on the scan tool and I'm quickly going to find my short term fuel trim, short term fuel thing bank one, sense bank one and bank two. I don't care about the long term at this stage. Uh, all we're doing is diagnosing heater circuit. That's it. And I'm going to go bank one sensor one and a bank one, two sensor one. That's all I'm worried about. Let's graph the bank. So this is what I mean um this for some reason chinese scan tool doesn't want to work with um 
Australian cars for some reason I, I do not know now I got no no values on the live data that's just crazy bizarre anyway I'm gonna have to go back out and come back in again auto scan all this again this is super annoying I've had this issue please or tell fix it if you watching my video please fix it okay now go to live data and I only got like four live data. I don't know why it does it. I've had this many, many times. Okay, let me fix this. I don't know. Turn the car off and on a couple of times maybe. Let's just go back all the way. And let's come back in. Let's see if that helps us. Okay, let's go EOBD. Auto scan. This is super annoying. Now, see on, on the scan tool, you see codes found zero, if you notice that or not. And if you go to DTC, it will say probably no fault code detected. See, no fault code. That means it's not communicating right. If you go to live data, it's just only four or five data pits a day. Oh, super annoying. So I'm going to have to come back out again, guys. I'll just shut everything down and I'll come back. All right, let's go again. I'll just go Asian EOBD auto scan. When I first started it, it did work, and now it's just annoying. All right, fault codes, no fault codes. So if you go to live data, it's not going to work. Why does it happen? I do not know. I thought it's gonna be two minutes check, but obviously this is gonna take too long now. It's super annoying, okay? All right, anyway, let's try again, guys. Let's try again. Auto, the, auto scan. And I cannot find oxygen sensor data, like a voltage data on uh, my, um, under Holden, like I cannot. So I need to go to OBD2, and this is what happens. Okay. Um. Let's go history. All right, I'm just going to try the first one we did. There you go. Same thing again. Same thing again. All right. Six five four six five four. It's the same can bus. <sighs> no fault codes again. Nope. 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 All right, let me try something. Let me go to the car specific first and then maybe come back there. I don't know if that's going to make any difference, but I'm just trying, guys. It is super frustrating. All right, if you come here, I can see all my um, uh, fault codes, but I went to each and every data pit here and I cannot find O2 sensor. So if you go to O2 sensor data here, I'll show you. No communication. And it does that too for some reason. Yeah. All right, I'm going to disconnect that Bluetooth connector real quick. Let me go back to home and let me try that again let's go to asian eobd auto scan and i think last time it happened to me on the same exact same vz commodore now you see there's a code two codes found if you go to dtc this time it will show you actually codes and now it's functioning the way it should just stupid so i think disconnecting the obd sorry the bluetooth um 
device um, VCI I think that helps so next time if you guys stuck with the scan tool I'll tell just try that guys this is annoying but what do you do but other than that Autel is awesome I love this tool all right so right here all I'm gonna do is short-term fuel trim go bank to short-term fuel trim and also I want to select sensor one bank one sensor one and bank two sensor one data that's all I want so if you know how this work right uh, this short term will not so right now it's the car is cold so it's gonna be open loop so when you first start the car the fuel trims not gonna change as in it's not gonna start correcting until the oxygen sensor start working so as soon as you see the oxygen sensor voltage going up and down that's when the uh, when the uh, short term is gonna start correcting at the same time so I'm just gonna start the car guys now while we're watching this we can watch here our our test light see it's how it's blinking that means it's a duty cycle control that's very normal to um, blink like that so that means we are getting 12 volt and earth on that heater circuit from the computer or the fuse or whatever all the way to the sensor so more than likely the fault is going to be the heater the heater circuit in the oxygen sensor basically oxygen sensor itself so until the heater warms up um, the oxygen sensor is not gonna do its job so right now I'm watching this data and you can see my bank one sensor one is already correcting you can see the short term and the voltage is going up and down on that one but my bank two sensor one is not moving at all because the sensor oxygen sensor hasn't warmed up yet to be functioning you, if you remember guys the basics oxygen sensor needs um, heat to to work okay so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go and uh, rev the car and trying to heat that oxygen sensor up just by the engine heat like exhaust heat okay and we can watch this um, live data at the same time and as soon as this O2 sensor start moving then we know the oxygen sensor part is working so it shouldn't take that very long I would say maybe a minute or two just give it a quick rev and when they start functioning at least we know the oxygen sensor part is okay um, but really our diagnostic is already over we already know confirm that O2 sensor is bad but I just taking an extra step just to show you guys and explain explain to you a few things okay so this is one of the very easiest diagnostic to do usually if it's a circuit fault it's pretty easy if you know the basics it's pretty easy to diagnose a lot of the sensor uh, sensor and stuff and, and most of the time you'll find uh, a sensor is at fault but saying that it can happen sometimes you could have other reasons why the um, other reasons why the sensor is not working you could have a broken wire you know you could have a computer problem a lot of that but we already always have to cover our basics so we you know we don't um, just change the parts and 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 you know not work and and what are you gonna tell the customer pay me for the sensor and it didn't fix that's not right guys so we always have to do this basic fundamental test so I'm raving it you can see my um, I'll just close the door so you can hear me properly you can see my uh, O2 sensor is slowly climbing up right My O2 sensor definitely slowly climbing up. I'm just inside the car revving the accelerator. <coughs> it's slowly coming up. That means the engine heat, the exhaust heat is slowly, <coughs> excuse me, uh, slowly bringing the uh, temperature up. Okay. So it's, it's trying to you know go up and down a little bit you can see it's it's moving up towards five <coughs> half a volt <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I 
I'm just gonna throw this loop status as well as you can see at the top the system A which is your bank one says close CL close loop system B says open loop so we still uh, at uh, closed loop at guys so <coughs> So I'll just get rid of this. Um, I'll just get rid of the ones that are actually working. We don't need to watch that. So we just focus on the ones that aren't working. Um, all right, that's three there. See how the voltage is slowly count climbing up? <coughs> it's about <coughs> it's about seven hundred millivolts at the moment. It's just sort of jumping up and down five six seven hundred <laughs> just keep raving guys you will take some time depending on the car a minute to a couple of minutes to a few minutes so basically that's the fundamental function of the heater in the oxygen sensor to heat the sensor up quickly so you will start working um, like back in the days they didn't used to, they didn't have heater in the oxygen sensor so they used to take a lot of time before the oxygen sensor has actually start working uh, so this is a huge difference if you don't have a heater, heater and if you have a heater in the oxygen sensor so it's just the emission thing guys on the new cars um, so the oxygen sensor can start quickly correcting fuel trims and you know just good for the environment basically so I'll just show you, I'll probably fast forward, forward it when I edit this video. I didn't intend to make this video this long, but yeah, it is what it is, what it is sometimes. <coughs> Check oil, it says on the screen. I don't know, it could have a low in oil, could be low on oil. probably quickly go and check the oil level before I do any damage guys <clears throat> anyway guys I'm not gonna keep going with that um, oxygen sensor live data because I think if I would restart it it's gonna start playing up on me like the communication to the scan tool like the like before now it's not moving at the moment uh, so I'm just gonna skip that you guys just have to trust me yes so it will heat up and you'll start functioning so basically i'll just go through what we did here so basically the test light was lighting that means we're getting powers and earth to the o2 sensor right now let's say if you're not getting the test light lit uh what that could mean is possibly um so you have to be sometimes careful too sometimes when it's warm hot the computer can decide to turn the heater circuit off okay guys so best to do this test when it's cold when the engine is cold uh, so let's say engine is cold you did the same test you you find the two same color wire and nothing no no lights lighting up here it means i would say check your connection first obviously make sure that's right and after that i would say check what's missing so are you missing the earth there or are you missing positive so if it's a earth start looking where's that earth coming from and most of the time i would say you will go to the computer um or you can go to the you know somewhere else um body okay um find the wiring diagram obviously and if you're missing uh positive i would say go check your fuse or sometimes it can come from the computer too. So check your wiring diagram, start going, following that direction and do your checks, okay? So for this one, quick and easy, we verified everything is good, wiring is good, computer is good, fuse is good, we need a new oxygen sensor. All right, I'll end it, end it right here, guys. Um, and I hope to see you next time.